If sciatica is suspected due to disc pressure on the relevant nerves, a stretching test is performed. The leg is passively raised by the therapist up to a point where pain is felt. This is generally around 40 to 60 degrees. The leg is then lowered about an inch, relieving the pain, and again on increasing the stretch of the sciatic nerve by passively dorsiflexing the foot. If the pain returns, then this indicates pressure on the sciatic nerve, mainly the lumbar 4, 5 and sacral 1, 2 and 3 peripheral nerves. If on repeating the same test and pain is felt in the back rather than the leg and when the neck is flexed, this indicates pressure along the spinal cord. With the patient lying on their front, the femoral nerve is put under stretch. Firstly by extending the hip and stopping the stretch and then increasing again by flexing the knee. The peripheral nerves of the lumbar 2, 3 and 4 would be involved. The prone hip extension test is completed to check for erector spinae tightness. The patient extends their hip with a straight leg. The muscle sequence should be hamstrings, gluteus maximus and then the erector spinae. Reversal of this indicates tight or tonic muscles. The side lying abduction test indicates in a similar fashion whether the quadratus lumborum is tight. The abductors, gluteus medius, minimus and TFL should contract before the quadratus lumborum. Tightness of the piriformis muscle may also be indicated if the foot laterally rotates early on during the abduction action. Four out of five people during their lifetime end up with back pain and two out of those five will have ongoing back pain. And generally, if you take the spine at its cervical, thoracic and lumbar levels, in most cases, because of movement, the cervical spine and the lumbar spine are the most vulnerable. So what conditions and what injuries can you get? Probably the biggest injury is because the back has over 400 muscles controlling the spine itself and because each vertebra have ligaments between them which are vulnerable to stress. Sprains and strains are perhaps the biggest problem due to sporting activity or incorrect posture during standing, sitting and lifting. The stresses occur at the small facet joints between the vertebra. The vertebral discs themselves will have pressure generally from people who bend forwards, sitting correctly, twist and turn, and that can squeeze the centre of the discs out, creating disc problems. So we have muscle problems, ligament problems, postural problems, which can lead to facet joint irritation or to discs protruding and bulging, commonly known as slipped discs. We can also get into diseases which affect the spine, and the upper part of the spine here can cause Sherman's disease. This affects young men and this is when the spine starts to go kyphotic. And that's because the vertebrae themselves start to soften and they become wedge-shaped. In the lower part of the spine, this is a congenital problem 
occasionally the vertebral arch here and here has cracked, and that is called spondylolysis. And if that in fact breaks one vertebra, will slip forward from the other, and it becomes a spondylolysis. That basically means that the lower spinal cord has a kink in it with resultant pressure. Where the nerves come out from the sides, through these little holes here, again, if we get discs narrowing, that can lead to spinal stenosis, or narrowing, which can be down the center of the spine, or it can be where the nerves come out through the foramen. Also, another disease that occurs is where the vertebra themselves can be up in the neck, or could be down here, and that's where the vertebra themselves and the discs start to turn to bone, as well as the ligaments, and that is called ankylosing spondylitis. This is a condition where the whole joint starts to stiffen up. So stiff shoulders or a stiff back could possibly be this disease, which generally occurs again in young men. The sacroiliac joint down here often relates pain if you have got problems or strains in that area and can refer pain down the leg. The actual sciatic nerve, which comes out here, the disc puts pressure on it, then the pain will travel down the sciatic nerve and down the leg onto both sides depending which way the nerve is pushing out. The other muscle which can simulate that problem is piriformis. If this is tight and the leg laterally rotates on the abduction test, this can put pressure on the sciatic nerve and that would create pain going down the buttock and also down the leg. One of the areas we did talk about were discs and where the nerves come out from. Those discs you can actually see here if we look at the nerves as each one comes out on its individual disc level. So we have basically lumbar 5, lumbar 4, lumbar 3 and lumbar 2. Remember 2, 3 and 4, these nerves join together to make the femoral nerve which goes down the front of the leg and lumbar 4, 5 and sacral 1, 2 and 3 go down the back of the leg, making the sciatic nerve. You can see they come out of these very small holes here, and if we get any narrowing of the discs, then you're going to create a smaller hole, and therefore you're going to put pressure on the nerves, especially if the disc is beginning to protrude or prolapse into the area. So it is quite a common area for disc problems to occur. Also at the back here, if the disc is getting narrow and the hole is getting smaller, the actual facet joints themselves are squashed together. And if they get squashed together, they can get worn and can lead to things like arthritic changes, hence the term spondylosis, which means osteoarthrosis or osteoarthritis of the spine. Here we can see some sports massage therapy students who are practicing a full musculoskeletal assessment. Initially, they are questioning the patients, asking about their present complaint, their past medical history, and any other aspects which will help them come to a conclusion as to what the problem may be. This will be followed up by the active assessment, which is the hands-on, and this is where the students will take the patients through the range of movement tests, palpation and finally any special tests that are involved.